10 years ago, minus one day. Twenty twenty eighth and thirty fifth. Yeah, thank you very much for the introduction. Um, and welcome, everybody. And I thought, uh, since this is a talk on Friday afternoon at 4, everybody's going to be very tired. So it should be uh, a bit of a fun topic. Um, so that's why uh, I thought this talk about um, yeah, somehow uh, generating puzzles uh, would be uh, uh, a sufficiently fun uh, uh, lecture for this occasion. Um, but um, this is the computer science colloquium, so I'll try to make some links to algorithms, geometry, um, complexity theory, maybe. Um, we'll see how far, how far we get. Um, yeah, so this is also uh, based on joint work with several other people from our department and several students uh, or ex-students uh, who did various projects uh, uh, with us on this topic. Um, so let me start at the beginning, uh, namely with the title. Um, who knows what bleaching is? Yeah. Weaving, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, 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 so, sorry, the dictionary. Ah, I see, I see, I see. In, in particular, it's weaving of uh, uh, plant material. So in uh, bleaching, you take as input something like this, and then as output uh, something like this. And there's uh, many people who uh, do this for a hobby. They, they like to grow trees into interesting shapes. Um, some other examples. Um, I was quite surprised to see that there's uh, also world championships in bleaching, which I did not participate in. Um, but there's a whole, a whole world uh, uh, out there. OK, so that's bleaching. How about uh, pencil? <laughs> Everyone OK? Yeah. All right. Paper. Picture puzzles. Look familiar to everyone? Ah, you prepared. Very good. Yeah. Uh, OK, so uh, uh, pencil, paper, picture puzzles. But what happens if we combine those terms into uh, pencil and paper? picture puzzles, well then we get puzzles which we solve with pencils on papers uh, which result in pictures. Um, so something like this, so this is a pencil and paper picture puzzle um, and the goal here is to do some operations um, like this, so here the rule is you have to connect every digit or uh, I guess there, there might be multi-digit numbers as well uh, so every uh, number to another number uh, that's the same and the distance of the connection should be equal to that number. Okay, and then you color in all the cells on the path from one number to the other and then if you do that for all numbers then you get uh, kind of a binary image with black and white cells and then if you stand back and you look at it then you think hey that looks like a light bulb. 
Okay, so there's a picture kind of hidden in the solution to this logic puzzle. Um, okay, so that's a pencil and paper picture puzzle, quite popular. Um, there are lots of uh, booklets you can find um, in the uh, uh, bookstores. Um, this one is Logisch Kleuren en Tekenen, Logical Coloring and Painting. Uh, so I thought, well, that's maybe these kind of puzzles, but actually this is even simpler. It's just grids with numbers, and there's a list with which number should be which color. Um, so it's, it's really just, there's no thought required for, for these. Uh, but then there's also Logisch Kleuren en Puzzelen. Uh, and there, there is a, a, an actual logical puzzle uh, behind all of these uh, uh, images. Uh, so this particular type uh, is, I think, what they call here the Zoekplaatje. Okay. Um, so these are, are quite popular types of puzzles. Um, but what I would like to do is, uh, well, with them, they're, they're very grid-like. They're very binary. They're horizontal and vertical lines, and they form a grid. Um, so what I would like to do is bleach those uh, pencil and paper puzzles. Okay, so I want to take a pencil and paper puzzle and turn it into something like this. Okay? Everyone uh, with me on the title of the talk? Very good. Then let's get started. Um, so in particular, um, well, pen there are many types of pencil and paper puzzles, but the one I want to focus on is, is this one here. This is called a nonogram. Uh, so let's go a bit into more detail about what nonograms are. Um, so a nonogram in the classical uh, um, meaning is a puzzle where, well, again, you color in some of the cells of a grid and that reveals a picture. Uh, but the rules you have to, for, to follow are um, slightly this. Uh, Close the door. Um, the rules are uh, uh, um, different than uh, in the little puzzle I, I just showed you. And these are one of the most popular types of uh, uh, picture puzzles. They reveal sometimes very complex images, sometimes even in color. Uh, they also have many different names. So in the Netherlands, they're mostly known as Japanese puzzles. Uh, but in Japan, they're not. So uh, uh, in Japan, they're known as hanji. Um, they're also known as uh, a pie cross, as a griddlers. Uh, so many names for the same thing, uh, many reinventions also of, the, of this puzzle type. Um, and the way that you solve a nonogram is um, um, by following the clues per row and column. Okay, so for instance, this is a solved nonogram. Um, well, this one doesn't really show a very interesting picture, but uh, um, it's small enough to maybe uh, uh, see what's happening. Uh, so the clues just tell you in this first row, there should be two consecutive cells which are colored in. And so indeed, you see here two cells which are colored, and they are consecutive. And so here there should be three consecutive cells colored. Here are also three. Here there should be three consecutive cells colored. and somewhere else, one consecutive uh, cell colored. And they should be separated by something. And that could be just one uncolored cell or many uncolored cells. We don't really know. And same for, for all the columns. OK? Yes, yes, good question. The order, the order should be uh, respected, yes. Um, OK, so this is a nonogram. Um, yeah, so, so indeed, uh, you are given the number of colored cells, but you don't know the numbers of, of uncolored cells. Um, OK, now the question, uh, or, or one uh, question you could ask is, given a nonogram, how easy is it to solve? Um, and there is uh, actually a lot of literature about that. Um, because nonograms are so uh, popular, there's, there's also scientific literature on how to uh, solve them. Um, and one important definition is that of a simple nonogram. And the nonogram is simple if you can solve it 
by only arguing about one row or column at a time. Okay. So in particular, here I have two uh, nanograms. One of them is simple and one of them is not. No? Okay. Um, so this one is, uh, is simple. So why is it simple? Because I can solve this nanogram by uh, only looking at one row or column. So I can start by looking at this column here, which tells me four consecutive cells should be colored. Well, there's only two ways of doing that, and I don't know which way is the right one, but I do know that the middle three cells will have to be colored. Yeah? That's an argument I can make, logical argument, by just looking at only one column of the puzzle. And so I can fill in, oh. Okay. So I could also have started by just looking at this row because that one's even simpler. That one uh, is actually already completely uh, uh, specified by the, by the clues. So it says three and one, and the only way to do it is this. And then I hope the next column, the next step is to look at this column where there's a four. And there's two ways you can put four uh, consecutive cells colored in there. But in any case, the middle three will have to be colored. Okay. Yes, there it is. Uh, OK, and so some other arguments you can make as well. If these three are colored and this one is not, then the middle, the one in between, cannot be colored. And then the one below that can also not be colored because there have to be two consecutive colored in this, in this column. So you can see you can solve this puzzle by just always making one uh, uh, logical reasoning step only based on one row or column, and eventually that will solve the whole puzzle to the picture that we saw before. Um, so this is a simple nonogram. On the other hand, this here is a non-simple nonogram. So this is a nonogram which has a unique solution, but there is no way of getting to that solution by only looking at one row or column and arguing uh, that some cells must be filled or not filled. Uh, well, it's kind of clear to see because there's nowhere to start. Right? If I look at any row or column, there's simply too little information to derive that any cell should be colored or not colored. Uh, however, um, there is a solution, um, and the solution is unique. Okay, So this is a non-simple nonogram. Um, so in terms of solving, Nonograms, uh, in general, the problem is NP-hard. Uh, but for simple nonograms, it's not NP-hard. It's a polynomial. Um, and interestingly, the nonograms that you will find in booklets that you can buy in uh, stores are almost always on only simple. Um, so that's an interesting uh, observation. Uh, it might be that uh, people who like to do puzzles uh, don't like to solve NP-hard problems while they're doing it. Um, it could also just mean that it's easier to generate uh, puzzles which are simple because you can verify them more quickly. Yes? Um, does it? Huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you put a single one here, and then a two by two block here, and a two by two block here, or here and there. Yeah. So this is not a valid uh, nonogram. And uh, I thought it was valid because I didn't solve the MP hard problem uh, of actually trying all combinations. Yes. Thank you very much should uh, try to find a different example. Um, OK. So um, yeah, so this is the, the main uh, classification uh, for nonograms. And, and we're only going to focus on simple nonograms, because those are the ones that are in practice. And then we uh, can actually do something. Uh, there are more fine-grained uh, difficulty measures, um, how to Judge the difficulty of a puzzle is a, a very interesting and separate uh, uh, topic. Like if you want to have a puzzle booklet with some 
one star puzzles, some two star, three star. How do you know how many stars a puzzle should have? Um, okay. So, so far, uh, uh, this is background on classical nanograms. Any questions uh, so far? All right. Then uh, let's move on to some more interesting things. So uh, what we thought um, was, well, these nanograms, they are kind of uh, limited in the types of pictures that they can express because um, you get these pixelated images. And OK, well, you can express quite complex images uh, as a grid of pix uh, pixels. Um, we do it all the time when we take pictures. But the problem is that in order to have a, a, a nice looking picture, you're going to need maybe a thousand by thousand grid. And then as a puzzle, it's not so much fun to solve anymore. Um, so it, it might be interesting to explore how we can uh, represent some more um, uh, interesting uh, images using uh, fewer components to the puzzle. Okay, so one idea is, well, uh, why do the lines in a nanogram all have to be horizontal or vertical? Right, why can we not use different orientations? So for instance, I could imagine a uh, arrangement of lines here, and then it creates some cells, and if I fill in some of the cells, then I get this nice picture of a house with a proper uh, slanted roof and not the kind of uh, staircase roofs that uh, you see in nanograms or in Minecraft. Um, so that, that's what we will try to achieve. Um, but the problem here is uh, that it's no longer clear how to give clues about this puzzle, right? Because we have, in a classical nanogram, we can say in every row there should be so many cells colored, but there are no rows and color, uh, <coughs> columns if we have arbitrary lines. OK. Um, so one way to uh, uh, deal with that is to say, well, instead of specifying clues per row or column, let's just specify them per line. And in particular, a line has two sides. And on each side of the line, you will encounter a different sequence of cells. Um, so for each side of the line, we could give uh, uh, a clue. Okay, so for instance, I could put a 5 on top of this line. And what does that mean? Well, it means that if I walk along this line and I always look at the face to my left, then there should be five consecutive faces that are colored uh, in the sequence of faces that I encounter. Okay? And, but the line also has a different side, and on that side, I put a 3 because for the faces below this line, there's three consecutive spaces that are colored. Right? So far, so good? OK, so I can do that uh, uh, for all the lines in the puzzle. Um, and then uh, um, I might get a puzzle like this. And now I can try to solve this puzzle basically using the same type of reasoning as before. So I can still say that a uh, slanted nanogram is simple if I can solve it by only ever looking at one of the uh, clues at a time. And so here I can do that. Um, for instance, where could we start here? The 2, 1, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 faces. And we need at least four of them to uh, uh, have two colored faces and then an empty one and another colored one, which means that this face here will need to be colored in any case, right? because the two could be these two or these two. So in either case, this one has to be colored. So I can start by coloring that face. Aha. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. That's not where we start. We start by this one. Why can we actually start with this one? Uh, ah, this is a, uh, uh, no? Yeah, yeah, this is interesting. So this is uh, even better. Uh, so 
instead of arguing about the 2, 1, we could have argued about the 1, 1 here. OK, well, this is not a simple way to, to solve it. Um, but the 1, 1 corresponds to this sequence of phases, right? This one, this one, this one, and this one. But these three phases are also the sequence that belong to this clue. So this clue tells us in these three phases, there's only one phase colored. And this clue says, well, in these four phases, there need to be two phases colored. So clearly, this one must be colored. Yeah, so this is not, this is not simple uh, reasoning. Uh, so that's why I'm a bit surprised that this is uh, 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 the first phase that is colored. Uh, but maybe I wanted to make the point that there are new types of reasoning that don't exist in classical um, uh, nonograms, which do exist in, in slanted nonograms, because you never have this in the classical case, that you have two <laughs> sequences of cells uh, which overlap partially. That's, that's not possible uh, for classic nonograms. OK. Um, so then from here, we can continue. Because if th this one is uh, colored, then well, there has to be two consecutive ones colored. So it must be these two, and these two must be empty. And then well, here there's a one at the start, so that it must be followed by an empty cell. And here also a one that must be followed by an empty cell. Um, then, yeah, so this one, one, uh, no, that would still have two options. Uh, well, which one? Yeah, I'm just wondering how I knew to fill in this one. That could be these two or these two, I think. Yeah. So the very first thing you said was the one on the bottom, and you have to fill that one in? Uh -huh. That would be this one, yeah. <laughs> well, um, 